Hi everyone. I am here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Oh, let's see, I hope I got it right tonight, huh? Oh. I didn't know how to dry flowers to put the Bible. Look at my page wet. And they're like, this is a big one. See, so sure about these flowers. But it's like falling apart and getting the page wet, so I'm going to take it out. Mom said to put them in a plastic bag and do that. I was thinking about trying that. I've got more in here. There's a white one. So I really like to keep them. There's three others. <laughs> I'll have to get a bag. I've got them in the kitchen. And I'll put them back in. It'll work. I've never dried flowers before. Okay. Hopefully I'm right and I got it set up right today. Looks like we're in the book of Matthew, right? Did I even tell you guys? I don't know. What in the world? I thought I set it up. I got it marked, like we've already done it, so I'm not sure here. Let me just glance at it here. I'm not sure, but I think it's we're ready to read this one. Matthew 19. Yeah, I don't remember any of this, so. Um, I thought I fixed everything last night, but I guess I didn't. Slack, and I've been very, very, very tired lately. Okay, so tonight the devotion is by Heidi Ball, and let's see, um, the verses she picked out to go with Matthew 19 for her devotion is 24, 25, and 26, so let's see what that says. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. All right, so true, so true, guys. All right, so now let me go to Matthew 19 and read that for you guys. All right, we'll be talking about divorce, the little children of Jesus, and the rich young man. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into the region of Judea to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read? He, Jesus replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you, that anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness and marries another woman 
commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If this is the situation between a husband and a wife, it is better not to marry. Jesus replied, Not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. For some are Enoch's, because they were born that way. Others were made that way by men, and others have renounced marriage because of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. Then little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who, were, who brought them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. Now, a man came to him, to Jesus, and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which ones? the man inquired. Jesus replied, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. He had a chance to follow Jesus. He asked for Jesus' help when Jesus told him what he needed to do. He didn't even want to do it. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? But like them, I don't think they were rich at all. And they didn't act like that. Let's see. They gave up everything to follow Jesus. Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then? What then will be there for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or fields for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life but many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first amen amen so he was saying a lot of the poor that are last will come first and the rich people like that people that's had everything in life and they don't even think they need God because they got so much money the world like you know worships them and does everything that they want because they got money people like that will be last 
They won't be first in heaven. They'll be last because of their actions. Okay, so now I'll read um, Heidi's Devotion. Okay, she says, I love this passage, the one we read about Matthew, the camel, you know, the eye of a needle. I love this passage because it offers me hope for a wealthy, unsaved friend. My husband used to do her yard work. Two years ago, disappointed by the poor condition of her massive iris, iris garden, she requested David remove it. I had to agree with her. The area was sloppy and never bloomed. But my spouse asked her to give the flowers one last chance. He dug them up, split and trimmed every resume, then replanted them. Soon after, he accepted a different job and quit gardening. We stayed in touch with our friend but life kept us too busy for visits. Last week she called, her voice tinged with excitement. There was something she wanted us to see. We hurried over, wondering what was going on. Upon rounding her corner, we couldn't believe the scene before us. At least a hundred irises bloomed in collars so vibrant they almost hurt my eyes. Would you love to see that? I hope they took pictures. The flowers I'd given up on. Now a delicate sea of purples, yellows, whites, and burgundies. All different colors. Oh my gosh. I would love to see that. I hope they took pictures. They should have put a picture in here. Wow. The flowers I'd given up on were now a delicate sea of purples, yellows, white, and burgundies. If I'd had my way, they'd have been thrown away. But my husband saw the possibilities and saved them. Like these irises, sin once kept me from blooming. But Jesus saw my potential, and instead of discarding me, he redeemed me. Salvation is possible for everyone, including my well-to-do, unbelieving friend. God's needle, threaded by Jesus, is big enough for anyone to pass through. Jesus' needle is big enough for anybody to pass through. All they have to do is believe and accept Him. Welcome, my child. He wants everybody to go to heaven, but it's up to you. It is only your choice whether you go to heaven or hell or not. Nobody else can make that decision for you. Jesus came and died for you on the cross. God gave up his only son, gave his only son, and he died on the cross for us for our sins, giving us the chance to go to heaven. Some people still choose not to. I don't understand. Not at all. And let's see the homework for tonight. Seek opportunities to help thread God's needle this week. Don't regard anyone's salvation as impossible. God doesn't. If they're rich and uh, wealthy, meaning rude and you know, to make, accept. They want people to do everything for them. You know, they want the best. Even they'll treat people horribly and get it even. Have you ever watched The Devil Wears Prada? You don't know what I'm talking about. If you're still sitting by them or something, and they ask you something, talk to them about God. Talk to them about Jesus. You never know, right? You never know. Okay, let me put this back. That's Bible bookmarker. Where's they're switched? That's okay. Okay, so now I hope I got time here. Let's read the new devotion. See, 
seems like I've taken up a lot of time. I hope I haven't, guys. I really decorated this page. Of course, last night I used a lot of stickers on it. Fifteen minutes. Oh, we're good. Okay. This one is called Always There, which I really like. Uh, Psalm 55, 16 through 23. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Psalm 55, 17. Don't you love that? Don't you love that verse? Psalm 55, 17. Psalms has some of the best verses in the whole Bible, in my opinion. I love the book of Psalms. Wouldn't it be nice if they had a book, which they probably do, just full of the book of Psalms? That'd be so nice. I could just imagine sitting at the park, making a video outside, just reading some of the Psalms you like. I'll have to look and see if I can find one. I'll look on Amazon here later. Okay, so let's read this. It never says who, oh yeah it does. These are all from Bill Crowder. I think I'm going to get another book from him as well. I forget what it's called, but it looked good. Several years ago, the radio engineers who work at our Daily Bread Ministries were getting ready to broadcast a program via satellite. They had prepared everything including the satellite link, but just as they were to begin uploading, the signal to the satellite was lost. Confused, the engineers labored to reconnect the link, but nothing worked. Then they got the word, the satellite was gone. Literally, the satellite had suddenly and surprisingly fallen from the sky. It was no longer there. Goodness, I didn't know they did it from the big satellite. I figured it was just one they had there, you know. I'm sorry, some mouth, sometimes my mouth is extremely dry. Let me see here. It had fallen from the sky. I suspect that sometimes when we pray, we think something similar has happened to God, that for some reason He isn't there, but the Bible offers us comfort. Wow. That is crazy. The Bible offers us comfort with the assurance that God hasn't fallen from the sky. He is always available to us. He's always there. He won't fall from the sky. Wow. He is always available to us. He hears and He cares. So very true. I'm underlining that. He believes and he hears and he cares. In a time of desperation, David wrote, Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Psalm 55, 17. No matter when we call on God, he hears the cries of his children that shouldn't encourage our hearts. That should encourage our hearts. What was David's response to having a God who hears prayer? Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. 55.22 Although God may not answer as we would like or when we would like, we know that at evening, morning, and noon, He is always there. Amen. You might not get the answer you want. Because remember, God knows the future. We don't. He knows what's best for you. So you may not get the answer you want. But don't be upset. I know it's hard, but God always has a plan. Sometimes the devil's there. Always trying to make your life harder. If you're a Christian, always trying to make your life harder. And try to turn you from God. Remember, he'll do bad things to you. So you'll blame God for it, thinking God doesn't care about you. That God's doing those bad things to you, but that's not true. Remember, God is all good, and the devil's all bad. 
Remember what the Bible says. You'll be recognized by your fruits. And God only does good. The devil only does bad. God is always available to hear the prayers of his children. Amen. All right. Let's see what the next one will be. Open the ears. Open the ears. All right, so of course I will get that one. I'll get all these set up when I'm done. Hopefully I won't mess it up again. Okay, now we're going to do the animal devotion. Everybody pick an animal. Everybody pick an animal. Sure. Animal. Dog. You got a dog? Layla? Everybody else? Pick an animal. This shirt's rough on my arm. I got a bad sunburn on this arm um, last week or so. Having it hanging out the window, I burn super easily. Okay. This is the one. See, of course, I messed up on this as well. Let's see. Okay. A dog for Sherm. You guys ready? I'm not sure what this one is. We'll see. Okay, it is by Jerusha Agen. And it's called Help Wanted. Or, sorry, Help Not Wanted. Help Not Wanted. Psalm 18.6 In my distress I called upon the Lord. To my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. I thought, you know, she wasn't going to want God to help or whatever by the title, but maybe it's a job. We'll see. She says, I knew we were in trouble when our Bernice Mountain Dog puppy, you got it right, sir, it's a dog, guys, Xander, threw himself to the ground in his first obedience training class. He wasn't happy with the idea of walking politely on a leash, and he decided he just wouldn't do it. Our dog's stubborn streak only increased as he grew older. I sometimes thought we had ended up with a mule instead of a dog. His back trick was pinning himself against the floor when he wanted when we wanted him to get up, daring anyone to try to lift his 135 pound body. 135 pounds. Those dogs are big. When Xander suddenly fell ill, and received a cancer diagnosis. He was just a puppy one again. I thought his stubbornness might be an asset providing the will to survive the disease. Instead, I soon saw we were in trouble once again. The disease weakened his hind legs and he had difficulty lifting his huge body to stand. I would rush over to help whenever I saw him struggling to rise. But the moment he spotted me coming, he wouldn't drop back down as though pretending he hadn't wanted to stand. I would linger near, assuring him I was happy and able to help him to his feet, but he wouldn't budge. His stubbornness wouldn't allow him to accept my help. As I shook my head, at the trouble his stubborn streak was causing, I realized I'm the same way. I have a hard time admitting I need God's help. I often try to muddle through on my own, neglecting the Bible's prayer. I often try to muddle through on my own, neglecting the Bible, prayer, or help from friends. All the while, God is hovering close reaching out a strong hand, assuring me he is happy and able to help me to my feet. But what happened to the dog? I hate it when they end stories like this. It doesn't say what happened. 
Don't you guys? I want to know what happened to Xander. I don't know. She didn't say. What are you struggling to handle on your own? Ask God to help today and welcome the help when it comes. Jerusha Agen. Uh, Jerusha Agen, what happened to Xander? We would all like to know what happened to Xander. Wouldn't we, guys? I hate when they end stories like that, don't you? I hate that. It's like, it's like, even movies, some of them do that. It's so aggravating when they do that. It's like, hello? Well, what happened? They don't say what happened. Now, I, if they don't say that, I wouldn't even want to watch it or read it, you know? Alright, I'll get this set up for tomorrow. The 31st. Just one more, one or two more days, guys. It'll be June. Can you believe it? Next thing you know, it'll be Christmas again. Wow. The title of um, the next one uh, gives it away. Yeah, it gives it away. So, But I'll let you guys guess beforehand. So I will, of course, get that set up as well. So I think that's it for our Bible study today. If I forgot something, please let me know. I'm going to go get all this stuff set up. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Bye, guys. God bless. And good night.